The NFL team based in the nation's capital will now be known as the Washington football team, the franchise said yesterday. Now, this is not the final name or rebranding of the team. It will use this name for now for the upcoming season, pending the selection of a different one. The announcement comes after Washington said it would retire its previous name following decades of criticism that it was racist. First on CBS This Morning, the head coach of the Washington football team is Ron Rivera. He joins us now. Coach, it's very good to see you. You know, on Twitter, there's a lot of head scratching and a big hum about this name, Washington Football Club. I know it's temporary, but it would be like calling you head coach man. So I'm wondering this. Are you guys <laughs> close to making a decision? <laughs> Well, good morning, Gail. But um, no, we're not close to making the decision. You know, the biggest thing that we've learned is that is that this is going to take steps. This can't happen automatically. So we're going to have to go through the process. You know, on July 3rd, we, we, we mentioned that we were going to go through a thorough uh, check, a background check on, on everything. And, and, and we found that it's going to be a little bit harder than we had anticipated. Um, I believe it was July 13th, we came out and said we were going to retire the name and the logo. And then yesterday we came out and said, you know, pretty much what we've done is we put a placeholder in terms of the name. So we are going to be known as the Washington football team because truthfully, this is going to be about a 16 to 18 month process to do it the right way and, and, and really not, not, not miss the opportunity to rebrand ourselves, uh, hopefully for the next 100 years. Are, are you planning, Ron, to change the team colors? No, the colors will stay. Um, one of the things that, uh, okay. and the big reason right. probably is because there's so much tradition and history with this football team that, you know, to change the colors would kind of distract from what this team has done in terms of its past history uh, with, the, with, the, with the championships that it's won. I mean, there was an era where they won three championships in about 10 seasons. So, you know, th th we don't want to lose that part of our history. You know, a lot of fans are still very reluctant for the name change. Were you on board right away? And how will you win over the people that aren't ready for the change? Well, you know, initially, I, you know, I'm one of those that grew up with, with the Washington Redskins, and I was a Redskin fan, you know. And, and I think the thing that people have to understand is that this is going to be a little bit of a transition. It's not going to happen immediately, but we're going to try and win the fans over by playing good football, more so than anything else. Because, you know, when you play well, when you win football games, people get behind you and they support you. And, you know, we've got to come out and show, the, uh, show our fan base that, hey, we're, 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 we're the same football team, just a different uh, name right now, a little placeholder again, as I said. But, you know, we've got to do the things the right way. We've got to change the culture as to who we are and, and really kind of not just rebrand uh, the name, but, but rebrand the, 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 the style of football we're going to play, rebrand the way we do things. And, and that's probably one of the most important things that we've got to do right now. And let's talk about the culture for a second. Listen, you started this job in January, so it didn't happen under your watch, the allegations from 15 women about sexual and verbal harassment mm -hmm. at the team. Were you aware that there were issues at the club before you joined? No, no, I wasn't. You know, again, when, when I first got there, you know, the biggest thing we talked about was changing the culture, the way we did things, and, and really was, was thinking from the football perspective more so than anything else. Um, but uh, and when these things came to light, you know, we had to really look at ourselves and, and dive into it. Um, you know, Mr. Snyder has continued to do that. He's hired a firm here in Washington to, to come and look at, you know, the way things are done and, and, and recommend the changes that we need to make. So, um, no, I didn't know these things that ha had occurred, but, you know, we had to make, uh, you know, we had to react to them. We had to do things the right way. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we're, 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 we're going to do. Yeah, you inherited, Ron, what they call in the streets a hot mess. Do you have any regrets about taking this job? <laughs> no. No, I don't. I, I truly don't, Gail. You know, I took this job because of, of, of what I saw on the football team in, in terms of those, those things, you know, who I saw as the young players that this team has. And to me, you know, there's a lot of young quality football players that have a bright future. And we've just got to, as coaches, coach these guys up and give them an opportunity to have success. You know, uh, Roger, Roger Goodell said recently that he regrets how the NFL had handled the issue of players kneeling. He has now reversed his position on that. Will you support players on your team who decide that they're going to kneel during the national anthem? Oh, most certainly. Again, you know, we got to understand that, that you know, this is one of our rights. It, it, in fact, it, it, it's in the First Amendment, freedom of speech and expression. So again, you know, these guys, all they're doing is exercising their fundamental rights and I'll support them because, you know, it, it, it's what our military has fought for, you know, for, for freedom. So again, you know, I, I think we've got to look at it that way. We can't look at it as any other way. Because I heard, Ron, that you read the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, to, to, 
to figure, listen, it wasn't lost on you about what needed to happen, but the fact that you did that kind of research. And this is what I've heard about you, Ron, that, you know, after the George Floyd uh, death, you know, it triggered a lot of emotion, it triggered a movement, and that you had a big Z a Zoom team call with your team to discuss. How did you prepare for that conversation with your team? Well, again, I went back and I read the Constitution. I, I read the Bill of Rights and the amendments. Um, I, I talked to sports psychologists. I talked to uh, friends of mine. I talked to a pollster, you know, friends of mine that, that, that you know, have these types of positions, a pollster. I, I talked to an activist uh, who works with the NFL. I've talked to some clergymen and I talked to some police officers. And I wanted to get everybody's perspective before I talked to our team, our organization, because I didn't want to miss something. I didn't want to say something that wasn't appropriate at the time. Uh, and, and one thing, you know, that did happen, too, is in my conversations with our owner, with Mr. Snyder, was that, you know, we had to do some action. We had to move forward. And we've been doing that uh, as an organization. All right, Ron Rivera, but you said something very telling. When you start playing good football, it, it, it makes everybody happy. It makes everybody happy. A lot of people cheering for you, cheering for you at this particular time. Very nice to see you, Coach. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are pulling for you.